Hi there. Um, I'm doing this video um, due to the fact that I have to kind of speak out what's kind of burning in my heart and um, I don't know how the video is going to go. I, I haven't really prepared so other than um, what I've studied a little bit in the Word since last night. And uh, I've been kind of upset in my spirit and I, I, I'm pretty familiar with how God um, allows me to feel certain things when things are wrong in the body of Christ. And I received an email last night of a pastor. It was it's public news, so I'm not gossiping for those of you out there who maybe want to accuse me of that. But uh, his name is Jim Swiley or Sweeley from an Atlanta church. And um, he publicly confessed to his congregation that he is gay. And I have to say that, you know, I've been saved over 30 years and, and things like this don't surprise me. Um, although there are times, and I can only count a few of them on my hand in the last 30 years, where I have actually trembled on the inside and have felt just sick to my stomach and grieved at the condition of the church, at the condition of our leaders. I am appalled by some of the leaders that represent God in Christianity today, and I'm not ashamed to, to speak against it. I am not ashamed nor guilty in any way to address any um, things that are going on in the body of Christ. And today, or right now, what I want to do is I want to look at a few scriptures in the Word and you know, either I really don't understand my Bible, I mean, it, and, and what I read about sexual sin and sexual perversion, it is so blatantly written in the Word. I don't know how we can uh, look at it and read it and, and just candy coat it. That seems to be my favorite word but since yesterday, anyway, because that's how I see the gospel of Jesus Christ that's being preached out there today. It's being candy coated with man's doctrines, man's ways. And you know, I really believe that God is tired of it. I mean, it, it, it's gone on for, for, for thousands of years. You know, you read all through the Old Testament where he raised up prophets to address sin in, in Israel. And so it's no different today. He, he is addressing the sin that's in the church. And, you know, I really and strongly believe that God is pulling out those leaders that are not standing up in holiness that are not standing with clean hands and a pure heart it's like it says in psalms who can ascend to my holy hill but hill but him who has clean hands and a pure heart and that speaks of ministry when we're called to a ministry that god has called us to it's not so much about the calling or the ministry but it's about our lifestyle and it's about how we present ourselves representing jesus christ and and we are to manifest him in the flesh we are not to manifest the works of the flesh through fornication, through adultery, through uh, less, lasciviousness, or all the other things that are, are written in the Bible. We are to manifest Jesus Christ in us. And he was a son, spotless, pure, without wrinkle, without blemish, and without sin. And we are to be that way also. And we are to represent him that way. And I, I will be bold enough to say that... Um, I stand in behalf of all um, leaders of, of that have fallen, and I ask for your forgiveness. I ask the world for forgiveness because, because they have truly not been an example of what Christ would want them to be. And I ask for your forgiveness. And, and I pray by God's grace that, you know, he raises up um, right-standing leaders in, in our day that we can see holy men of God that will take the truth and, and, and lay it as a foundation so that the world can see that he is real and that his, his ways are holy, his ways are just, and there, that there is no compromising God. There is no um, whitewash uh, teaching, but it's pure and holy from the word of God. Hallelujah. So again, I'm not ashamed. I'm I'm bold to declare this, and I don't really care too much what anybody thinks about me. Um, I've been saved long enough 
to know that what matters is what God thinks about me. And what matters is that I do God's will and his purposes. So today, I believe, because I know how he speaks to me, I know the way he makes me feel about things, and I am a voice. I may not be uh, anyone in particular that has a high position or has a, has a, a well-known name out there, and I may not even be a, a person that can um, articulate certain words, but one thing I do know is truth. And I know that when God makes something real to me, I am going to declare it with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my passion. And I don't really care too much about what anybody thinks about me. And it's not about whether I'm showing love or whether the tone in my voice is wrong, but what it's about is declaring truth. And, and God knows my heart. There are many people who don't know me and will watch this and will judge me and say I'm too harsh or, or whatever. I, I really don't care, but it, it, those who do know me know that my heart is towards the churches, towards the body of Christ, to see her restored, to see her rise up, to be all that Christ has called her to be. And, and that is the call that he has put on my heart to declare truth. So I want to I want to go through some scripture and um, again help me to understand, you know, I, just because I'm speaking uh, the word or, or declaring here doesn't mean that maybe I have all the truth. I know I don't have all the truth, but what I do know is what the word tells me. And sometimes the word is plain. And when I when I look at certain scriptures speaking against um, sexual sin and perversion, and how Paul addressed it in the Corinthian church. How can we alter that? How can we change that and say that that's not what he meant? I have a hard time believing that. So I want to just go through some scriptures. And, um, you know, if you want to get your Bible, go ahead. Go through them with me. But uh, first of all, I'm going to read Jeremiah 15 because, you know, I love the book of Jeremiah. And I'm not comparing myself in any way to Jeremiah. But I do know that um, there are many Jeremiahs out there. And... Yes, I have to say that I feel sometimes like Jeremiah, and sometimes I feel like Hosea, and sometimes I feel like Amos. But you know what? It's not about um, calling. It's not about name tags or whatever, but it's about what God shows us and what he um, expects for us to, to do out of obedience, and that's what I feel I'm doing here today. Uh, Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thou words, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejo rejoiced. I sat alone because thy hand, because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Jeremiah was a man who was filled with grief. He was considered the weeping prophet. And, and, the truth is, is not many people can understand the heart of a true prophet. And I'm not talking about any prophet. If, if you're a true prophet, you will speak the heart and the mind of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will declare the truth and not worry about what anybody's thinking or saying about you. Because truth is what will set the church free. And we need to see repentance in the body of Christ. We have not seen enough repentance and I believe that God is going to raise up voices in these last days, and he's going to cause them to declare truth. He's going to cause them to bring back his church to that place, to that altar, that bended knee. Because truthfully, if, if you are so blind out there that you cannot see the corruption, and you cannot see the sin that's going on in the churches, and that, and that leaders have closed their eyes to it, they have caused a blind eye uh, towards it, then something is seriously wrong with the church. We have to open our eyes. We have to open our ears to hear what God is saying in these last days. Um, go to Jude if you're following. If not, you can listen. But I'm, I just want to touch on a few scriptures that I have been studying out. And uh, like I said, this was just, God laid this on my heart last night because I was grieving. And I was grieving this morning. I had been shaking in my in my physical body and trembling, and I know that that is the spirit of the living God on me because He is He is grieved over the sin that's going on right now in the church, especially the the, the compromise of it, especially the um, the stroking of it. I don't know how else to word it, but but this this 
video that I seen of, of this pastor, and I'm not, I'm not here to, um, I don't know the man, but what I do know is that there is a condoning of sin. There is a condoning of, of what the word is speaking against, and they are bringing it into Christianity and saying that, and again, I will quote some of the things that this man has said. He quoted that he was born this way, this, this, this pastor that has come out of the closet, so to speak, and he has said that he was born this way. I'm sorry, but how can the, the lifestyle, and, I, and he says he's not practicing it, I don't know, but I mean, I understand if you've got issues in your heart, just as, as David had issues in his heart, but, but you repent of those issues, and then you turn away. Repent means to turn around and walk away from what you, what you have sinned. That's true repentance. It's not condoning what is in, our, in your heart. We all have issues in our heart that we could say we battle with. I mean, but we don't condone it or we don't, we don't justify it by, by giving into it and saying that it's a part of Christianity. Okay, so uh, in Jude 1, chapter 1, there's only one chapter, but um, verse 4 it says, For there are certain men that have crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly man, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That word lasciviousness, it means marked by expressing sexual lust, stimulating sexual lust. And just, it was no different in, in, in the Old Testament. They, um, they offered um, sexual acts to Moloch, the god, and Ashtaroth, and all that. We won't get into all of that. So things have not changed. There's nothing new under the sun. And the whole truth of the matter is this. We are human creatures, human flesh. This is flesh. We, we have a carnal man, and we have a spiritual man. And we are prone if we're not walking in the Spirit, if we do not give ourselves totally to God, 100%, we are prone to sexual sins and other things that go along with the lust of the flesh, be it covetousness, be it greed, be it idolatry. It's all idolatry as far as I'm concerned. But but looking at this word, it's, it's quoted six times in the Bible, in the New Testament. And we're going to go through those scriptures. But um, I wanted to read it also in the Amplified. Because sometimes the Amplified, you know, helps us to understand things a little better. It says, For certain men have crept in stealthily, gaining entrance secretively by a side door. The enemy comes in through another door. And if you have not got ears to hear what God's Word says, but you are um, just receiving everything into your ear gate, then you need to really do some heart searching. Because you, if you're believing everything that's being told to you, then you're naive. I'm sorry, but you need to know this word for yourself. And my Bible tells me that um, sexual sin, sexual perversion, fornication, adultery will have the judgment of God on it. The wrath of God. That's what my Bible tells me. And it says that they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, we're going to get to some of those scriptures. but Okay, so... Gaining entrance secretly by a side door. Ungodly, impious, profane persons who pervert the grace, the spiritual blessing and favor of our God into lawlessness and wantonness and immorality and disown and deny our soul, master, and Lord. When we, um, where it says here, pervert the grace, I call it greasy grace. When we um, say that, grease, that grace is greasy, by condoning sin and adding things to it. And what we are doing is we are denying what Jesus did. We are denying who Christ is. And he is the, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's what the Amplified says. Okay, so in verse 7 it says, same chapter, verse 7. The wicked are sentenced to suffer just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the adjacent towns, adjacent towns which likewise gave themselves over to impurity and indulged in unnatural vice and sensual perversity. 